Hi, this is Darn42, and this is my tutorial on how to use uh, selection stuff. Here's the select use pivot point center and use selection center modules. These uh, describe what rotating, what rotation you will be using. Here's the uh, the local, you can which uses the pivot points and the orientation of that, as well as it is in pivot point mode, which also uses pivot points but doesn't take the orientation into account. Now we can also use effect pivot to align the pivots. Now if we go to view and use selection center, it takes the center of mass into account when rotating. Now if we switch back to view, this is pivot point, and then we go to selection center, and now we rotate based on the center of mass. And you can move a piece farther away, and it will also correspond to the center of mass. And then if you go to your local, it rotates based on each object's individual center of mass. Now my favorite is the working pivot, which you can move about any way you choose, and you can even align it to objects. And basically, I'm going to do it to the cylinder, and what it does is when you do use working pivot, every object will be rotated about that pivot which is so useful you can use it to pretty much create any kind of uh, detail pattern you want around a circular object and even um, you can use a flat surface and uh, rotate that flat surface 90 degrees to create a pattern across larger things then you can use array and set the maximum to 360 degrees and just have a perfectly spaced circular array about the object which takes away a lot of the guesswork involved with just rotating. Now what I'm going to do is symmetrize my uh, my thing I just selected, I just made with the cylinder and the sphere across the across the box. Here we can select the symmetry modifier and we can drag the mirror to wherever we want. If you click on the symmetry modifier it selects the mirror and we can drag it. But what we can do, which is more accurate and much more useful, is we can use the align tool and align it to the rectangle, to the box. And what we can do is we can either orient the mirror in along the box's pivot, or we can uh, use it just based on the pivot that has already been set. So now we have this cool little pattern-ish thing. We have our selection tools. Now what I'm going to do is use this, uh, this nifty tool, and it's called the spacing tool. It's Shift I on the keyboard, and what it does is it takes the object and it puts an array along a spline. And you can use the create spline function from uh, the edit poly modifier to create the splines and use that as a basis to uh, get a bunch of geometry oriented along a curved or an awkward surface that normally would be much more difficult to place by hand or to use arrays to do.
if you hit the follow button, it um, it takes the objects thing into account, the uh, axes. And then, since we instance it, we can attach objects to the re the box, and that will create a huge, it, and it will add them to every other thing, which is a great workflow to work with, a simple object that you add to later with instances. By the way, I'm sorry, This I'm re-recording audio, and it's lagging. The video is lagging, so I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm guessing that we are about the place where I'm explaining the use pivot points. So, what you can do is when you have a group selection, you use pivot points to um, either put a modifier based on each individual object or you can uh, uncheck it to do a selection center based thing so if we have it checked then everything gets bended the same and this looks really cool but it's not what we're after actually it looks very cool anyways we go and check and uncheck it and we can bend it and it will all bend together and so what we can do is if we bend it and change the axes we can end up having this cool little like pattern that gets put along a surface which happens to be like a cylinder or a half circle or two and that has a lot of potential to be used very well in very many situations it is what I use to orient the uh, details on the cupola for example And you can use taper and other modifiers as well with this, and it is a great workflow as well to work with, instead of having to try and do everything. Now we're going to work on the home grid using a user grid, which is go, click the grid, and then right click, activate grid. Now what this does is it allows you to um, create a surface to work on so that you can use a reference of another object which normally wouldn't be allowed uh, like a round object and you can use that as a reference but you can also draw on a flat surface which is kind of difficult to do when you have a curved surface to begin with you usually have to go through wireframe which can just be very disorienting and not fun and then you just hit activate home grid once you're done with it and